Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering Java. This is lesson number five. Uh, here we're going to finally learn how to use the objects that we've created, and we're finally starting to get into real object-oriented programming. So here all I have done is copy uh, the relevant parts of the last lesson. So this should all be familiar to you. In the last lesson, we created this class called Aircraft, uh, and we said we we're going to use it to create objects that are different types of aircraft. So here is a very popular aircraft called Cessna 172, and here's another popular aircraft called Piper Saratoga. These definitions here are just creating the objects uh, of these names, and we've done that in the last section. So there's nothing at all new here, it's just copied over so I can continue with this example. Now we've also said that when we create this object called Cessna 172, because it's a part of the aircraft class, that means that associated with this name are all of these variables down here. Um, passengers, cruise speed, fuel capacity, fuel burn rate, that those are kind of tagged, so to speak, or associated with in memory this object name. And, and similarly, Piper Saratoga is separately in memory, an object that also has these variables associated with it. That's kind of the whole point of object-oriented programming. right? So what we want to do in this lesson is learn how to now assign values for the Cessna aircraft into these variables and assign values to the Piper Saratoga aircraft um, for these for these things and also learn how to print these values to the screen and so we're going to be really using the object oriented nature of Java to do this it's very very simple once you have the object created all you have to do is just treat it like a regular variable but you have to tell it what object you're talking about so Cessna 172 and we're going to use the dot notation so this is the object and whenever I press the dot notice how this dialog pops up and it's telling me that cruise speed fuel burn rate fuel capacity and passengers notice how they're a different color here and they're all up here at the top and notice how it says aircraft 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 that means that Java knows that this class exists here it knows that aircraft exists and it knows that Cessna 172 is an object of that class so when you put the dot here after the name, it's giving you suggestions. Which one of these variables do you want to use? Now you can either um, click one or you can just keep typing. Um, for instance, if I ignored it and I just kept typing, I can type passengers, just like that. Notice I'm not using the dialog box at all. And I could set it equal to four because the Cessna 172 carries four passengers. Now notice that whenever I hit the semicolon, everything disappears. The variable changes to blue to match the blue down here and everything's fine. There are no errors here. In fact, if I save it and I run it, everything's run with no errors. But of course, I haven't output anything to the screen yet. So let me go down below and say, well, let's assign something to the cruise speed variable for a Cessna 172. So Cessna 172, I hit the dot, and whenever I do that again, this dialog box pops up. So I can go down here um, to cruise speed, which is already highlighted, and I can hit enter. When I hit enter, cruise speed automatically pops in there, so it's a time saver. Equals, and in this case, the cruise speed for Cessna 172 is 140 miles an hour, roughly, so that's what you put in there um, for the cruise speed of a 172. And then thirdly, Cessna I think you can see the pattern here, 172, I hit my dot, uh, and I can go down to fuel capacity. I can go down, see how I'm going up and down in this list with my keyboard, and I can hit enter, fuel capacity, and I can say a Cessna 172 carries 56.5 gallons of fuel with a semicolon, and then Cessna 172 dot uh, fuel. Notice how as I continue typing burn, it eliminates everything else, and I can either hit enter to continue, or I can just keep typing. The fuel burn rate for Cessna 172 is 9.5 gallons per hour. So this is in gallons per hour, this is in gallons, this is in miles per hour, and this is the number of passengers. So now we have assigned values specifically there for a Cessna 172 as they associate to these variable names. Now it's important for you to realize that these variables that are part of the object that we call Cessna 172, um, they're, they're just variables like anything else. I mean, I can, I can take this variable and I can multiply it by three, I can divide it, I can use it in mathematical operations. I can also use it to print things to the screen, um, just like we can print any variable to the screen. So for instance, if I want to um, print to the screen, I can use this print statement like we've been done. Um, let's do, uh, Let's say, let's say something like uh, Cessna 172 passengers colon space and then over here I can do a plus and I would put any variable name um, but I want to print out to the screen how many passengers it can hold so I can say Cessna 
172 dot and again this is going to pop up and I can just go down to passengers or I could keep typing and that is a variable this whole thing with the dot is a variable it references the variable that's inside of this object here notice I'll tell you right now though notice how we've been using all along system dot out dot print line this is a method that is part of this that is part of this so it's a hierarchical kind of thing the passengers is part of the object Cessna 172 so the dot notation you've actually been using before but now you can kind of understand the reason why it's there it's because everything is an object in Java so I'm going to go ahead and hit um, save and I'll run this guy Cessna 172 passengers colon 4 and when it prints this out it's using the value that we stuck in there we can print anything we want out system yeah, let's do system dot out dot print ln and let's go in here Cessna 172 fuel burn rate and then over here I can put plus Cessna 172 dot fuel burn rate and then I can continue here just like I can always do with the print statements and I can say gallons per hour GPH gallons per hour so let me go ahead and do this and hit print Cessna 172 passengers for Cessna 172 fuel burn rate 9.5 gallons per hour so I'm just showing you here how after you've created the object you have access to all the variables that are a member uh, of that of that now of that object um, because whenever you create the object you're setting aside memory to hold all of these values now similarly let me go down here similarly we actually created two objects earlier. We created a Cessna 172, which we've done here, and we've created a Piper Saratoga. That's a different kind of aircraft. It's a little bit faster. So what we can do to assign values there is we can say Piper Saratoga dot. And when we do that, again, Java knows that these, that these variables are part of that object now because it's, they're created from the same class. So let's go ahead and select passengers. Double-click passengers like that. Piper Saratoga passengers can hold six. Let's go a little bit faster. Um, cruise speed, I'll hit enter. The cruise speed for that airplane, 201 miles per hour. Piper, Sarah, Toga, dot. Uh, let's do fuel capacity, I'll hit enter to complete it. And that's 102.5. Notice that these are decimals uh, here because the fuel capacity in our class is listed as decimals. And the fuel burn rate is listed as a decimal as well. We're going to hit a semicolon there, and then the last one, Piper, Sarah, Toga, dot. Uh, let's do fuel burn rate. That is 20.5 gallons per hour. So I'm assigning to that variable. So notice that each of these objects, the Cessna and the Piper, contain the same variables in each case. And you reference it with the dot. The variables that are defined and the types are all contained in the template that we call a class. Now if we wanted to print something out here, uh, system.out.println. We could say something like um, uh, Piper Sarah Toga Cruise Speed. And notice it's underlying it, so we need to have uh, quotations. That's what's the problem there. So we'll go ahead and close that off. And then over here, we will have um, Piper Sarah Toga dot Cruise Speed. Right? And then I can put another plus if I want to. This is optional miles per hour because that's how I'm measuring the speed. So let me go ahead and do that. And let me go ahead and do a backslash n to space this down a little bit so we don't get confused. And we'll hit run. Piper Saratoga cruise speed 201 miles per hour. Notice how the 201 and the miles per hour um, are on top of each other because I didn't put a space here. If I put a space for the miles per hour, then I'll run it again. And you can see 201 miles per hour, which matches exactly what we typed in for that variable name. So it's important for you to know that these variables that are part of an object, they can be used just like any other variable. I can do computations with them. I can multiply this by five or divide it or whatever. I can use them in print statements. I can use the math methods that we've talked about like square roots and cube roots and things like that. I can. These are just regular variables. It's just that they're uh, kind of aligned in a structure that we've defined, which is the aircraft class. I hope you can see now how classes can be useful. 
um, because I can define this one place and as a programmer or someone that's reading code I can come in here and see what does this class look like oh it contains this stuff and then I'll know that anytime I create an object of that class I'll have access to all these variables uh, and so on and later on we'll learn that this class and I've kind of hinted before this class can contain variables which I've already kind of shown you how to do here and it can also contain methods to operate on these variables maybe I want to do some computations some aircraft computations uh, dealing with fuel capacity or whatever and I can define methods in here to do that and we're gonna all get to that in a little bit but for now just know how to create your class how to create the object from the class and how to access the variables with the period notation as we have done here now I encourage you to go off to the exercises do the exercises uh, the exercise that I have in there because I'll, get, I'll give you a lot of practice with doing this with a different uh, a different uh, class and different objects off in the exercise. So go do that and then follow me on to the next lesson in Java.